Crazy to see how many people it takes to make a stupid video or a film or a TV show or whatever. But now that I'm in the thick of it, it's like you notice every detail trying to do it. <laughs> yeah. Something I would never notice in a million years. Right. Yeah. Well, you you can miss things though that people do notice, but you you know. Everyone's different, I guess. Yeah, I guess the goal is if someone does notice it, that means that they're watching it enough or closely enough because they enjoy it so much that they are picking up stuff like that. They're invested. Yep. Right? Because if you don't care about something you and you don't pick that shit, you won't pick any of that shit up. You'll just be watching. Go, yeah, all right, great, it's over. I wasn't. I was looking at my phone the whole time, anyways, checking out Pornhub. <laughs> is that what you do? And the lighting when you're in bored? that Pornhub video was weird. Did you see that weird reflection in the bottom right corner of that Pornhub video? <laughs> Wait, so, you know, there's a stereotypical thing when someone's bored with what you're saying, they'll look down at their phone. Oh, yeah? Okay, cool. Yeah. When you do that, you're going to Pornhub. <laughs> I always assume that's what everyone was doing. I think they're just looking at their texts and you checking porn? their emails. Are they doing you porn or I, X hamster or something? I don't think so. Oh, shit. You've got, you know a lot of these. <laughs> You've never heard of X hamster? I have. Uh, Do you know why it's called X hamster? Because it's Richard Gere's company. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it makes me think of. Yeah. I'll Richard, exactly Richard Gere. That's the only time I ever heard of a hamster being... <laughs> Is that why it's called that? Used. Oh, I don't. I actually don't know. Oh, that's what you're. I guess say. I asked it in a way that sounded like I had the answer, but <laughs> no, it just makes me think of Richard Gere because it's like, why is a porn site called a hamster? Now, was it a hamster or a gerbil? <laughs> I don't even. I only even know the story from South Park or stuff like that. Mm. I don't remember it being in the news. Or, or how that was I don't think it was ever in the news. <laughs> it was always just a... Uh, rumor or something? Rumor, yeah, exactly, a rumor. I thought maybe someone that he did it with exposed him to some newspaper. See, yeah, but I'm guessing, I guess. I don't know. No, I think it's all a rumor, just like um, there was the Jamie Lee Curtis one, too. Um, she's a man? Yeah. That's so weird. <laughs> or she has so a penis like, or something like that. Yeah, I know. It, which really did not. Uh, we we accept and love JLC either way. Of course. But I mean, it, you choose the most feminine human <laughs> ever or the hottest chick. I don't She's know. She's not the hottest, most feminine. I mean, she was pretty hot. And she true was in, in the 80s. Yeah. True Lies. The the one she's in with Arnold? Yeah, and she's older in that. Have you seen Perfect? No. The movie where she's an aerobics instructor? No. That's what I'm checking out on Pornhub. <laughs> is that fucking movie? I'm wow. not even kidding. I'm pretty sure it's on Pornhub and it's just a movie to masturbate to. I don't know what else. <laughs> like, you know, aerobics is not there's nothing there to make a full movie about it. <laughs> Right. But they explore it like, oh, it's this world. Wait. Imagine where everyone's working out at the same time and you meet someone from across the room. It's just like, Wait, is that the yeah, one? that's like a John, class. John Travolta in that one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. God, they make working out look so hot. Yeah. Sorry, some guy just walked out of your apartment and spit as he walked down the stairs. I don't know. That's like a new person I don't recognize, and I'm like worried. Mm. <laughs> when I see him walking back and forth, I'm like, did a person move in without me completely being aware? Right. I never saw any furniture being right moved, but he's very quiet. That's also suspicious a little bit. <laughs> Maybe he found an unlocked door and is just right. up there. Is he always spitting? No, but I don't want that shit. This is a classy joint. Yeah, you don't want someone walking down the stairs. 
No. Yes. But you can't control that, I guess. What am I going to do? Spitting in general is pretty um, not classy. Thank no. you very much. <laughs> wow. Hard <laughs> stance broke, there. Broke that down. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, even in the olden days, I don't know. Spittoons were just a Wild West thing, or were they more? Did they go back further? Were they in high society ever? <laughs> That's a good question, but I mean, I just assume it's people who dipped or chewed tobacco back then. Right. I was at a friend's house. This relates back to that. I re- I went <laughs> visited my friend's house in high school and I was just meeting his parents or something or I don't know, we were talking, whatever. I leaned against a counter. I just my hand was where a cup was and you know when that happens you may just play with whatever's just sitting yeah. there because your hand's just already leaning there. I was playing with the cup. I look inside the cup. It's a spit cup. <laughs> and I almost barfed. And it's like there are cu- then I'm starting to notice there are cups everywhere in this house. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So yeah, I Maybe because of that, I never even tried chewing. It's like, what a disgusting habit. <laughs> it it is disgusting. Cool. Smoking, you look cool, at least. Right. And you got an excuse to go hang out with the other cool smokers. Right. They're so cool it's out It's like there. a club, yeah. Yeah, you're just hacking stuff up and wishing they <laughs> never started. Um, the Yeah, spitting has never been cool. Uh, cowboys, kind of. Baseball players, you can spit on the you can spit on the ground if you're playing major league baseball. Yeah, that's okay. That does look okay for because you're already playing a sport. You can be gross in the right. middle of us playing a sport. You're already grabbing your crotch. And you're already sweating. Picking your butt. You got dirt. Yeah, <laughs> you got dirt all over you. Yeah, or if you're riding a horse, if you're on a your cowboy riding a horse, you just spit on your horse's head. Who cares? Yeah, I suppose. I was going to say that's just one of the less cool parts of being a cowboy, but you're right. I mean, you're already dusty and what's one of the less cool for... parts? Chewing or yeah, riding and a... spitting and chewing and spitting is one of the least cool parts about being a cowboy. Yeah. You'd be the tobacco-free cowboy, the anti-Marlboro man. No, I'd be I'd roll my own little cigarillos. Oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, isn't that a cool word? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> I just yeah. think of uh, Clint Eastwood in those old yes. Italian movies. Yes, you know when he when he made that face when he was chewing it. Uh, yes, it's because he hated tobacco. <laughs> he like hated the taste of it. He didn't smoke. He's like a straight edge guy his whole life. Wow, that's why he was grimacing. Wow. But it made it look, it made that cigarillo look really cool. <laughs> it really did, yeah. But they made him he needed to smoke for that role. Yeah, I think it was an action for him to do during giving, you know, his little soliloquies and shit. Well, but whereas Walker Texas Ranger didn't smoke, didn't chew, didn't do nothing. Imagine how much cooler he would have been. <laughs> I can't imagine. I don't think we deserve that in this world, you know, <laughs> yeah, for him to be true. much cooler than he was. <laughs> it's true. Chuck Norris facts really went away. Yeah, I grew up in Dallas and when and I went to school at OU, which is near Dallas, and every and I acted in college and every person I knew in show business who I ever met uh had been an actor on Te- Walker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> really? Because <laughs> it must have been the only big show that was shot in the area. And I guess they made a lot of episodes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that show was a fun watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a really good show. That's a really fun show. Um, Chuck Norris. There was an episode where Gary Busey was like an evil priest. <laughs> Whoa, cool. That was the best episode to randomly happen upon. I mean, it was as good as watching those Conan clips. Yeah. But the whole episode, because when you cut away from Walker, you're not cutting to a normal actor. You're cutting to <laughs> Gary Busey. <laughs> and like there was one scene where it cuts to him talking to some guy in a bar. He's wearing a priest suit. 
in the bar. <laughs> in the bar. Amazing. And he's finishing a story and he's just like, yeah, and that's when I shot the frog straight through the throat. <laughs> and then the other actor's just like, well, I'll see you later, father. It's just like, what? <laughs> Clearly improvised by Busey. He's just telling a real story about before they started shooting that scene in Dallas. Maybe. He's, he's, I think he has cognitive issues and so who knows <laughs> who knows who knows can you make up a chuck norris fact right now for our listening and watching and invested audience chuck norris is so tough damn it <laughs> i already painted myself a quarter <laughs> chuck norris's beard is so rough that a pangolin. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say a pangolin tried to mate with it, and that's how we got coronavirus. <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. It's a safe okay. room. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, the whole world's listening, you know. I'm <laughs> I've seen our viewer numbers. It's. Yeah, astounding. We're on a. We're on a worldwide stage. It's quite incredible. <laughs> what are um what do you mean were even the old Chuck Norris facts? Like he doesn't cry, his tears are Tabasco sauce, and he kicks Jesus in the nuts. Yeah, those for me, those were always hilarious. I know, go on. Mm, I don't know. The thing that I loved about that show or that makes me think fondly of it was the Conan clips. Yeah. When he had the the uh, lever. Yeah. He would pull it down and uh, it, a screen would pop up and it would show a Walker, Texas Ranger clip. Just so the youngsters know. <laughs> right. But dude, I really, that was, I got excited. And he would like mess with it. He'd be like, oh, do we want one more? And I'm at home going like, come on, Conan, pull it again. <laughs> yeah, Those yeah, are the yeah. best little just five second clips. It was so good. They were so good. Check that out on YouTube after you're done watching this video on YouTube. We'll link For it sure. here, 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 and there. Click inside I... here. <laughs> uh, Excellent. Yeah. But so when you hear the facts after that awesome segment, TV show segment, I don't know. They're co I get it, but it's like, no, dude. Yeah. They're not that funny. I don't remember any of them. I get no. it. You know, you get the premise. It's just an exaggeration. Right. The end. Right. He <laughs> he flew the stork to his baby's house. Yeah, I don't know why I can't think of any. <laughs> I've like blocked them out of my brain because they're so hack too. I mean, that, right. that was like a time when that was big. That was right. a time when, you know, Axe body spray commercials <laughs> were like over the top. And right. Bud Light was like all about being a bro and stuff. Right. Right. So I think right, it, it was right, too right. much after a while. How dare you, Cornell? Just kidding. <laughs> it's definitely yours. Uh, on the seventh day, God created sleep, and Chuck Norris said, not for me. I'm going to stay awake and kick some ass. Sorry, when these come in, I got to reply right away. I never... It's okay. I'm going to roll here. Okay. Yeah. Clearly. Sharks don't... Sharks swim uh, in the water, but when Chuck Norris is around, he s s makes a shark walk and do a little sexy dance. Chuck, uh, the new word uh, used instead of fuck is Chuck. Hey, oh, Chuck, wow, you. you are really lost without me, Cordell. <laughs> Holy shit. I'll go on. I'm on a roll. All right. Well, I've come up with like 20 Chuck Norris facts. You have yet to come up with. No, you came up with one. It was pretty good. I want to look one up while you while you just go on a roll. OK, I'm gonna Chuck look Norris up. punches so hard. Ooh, he punches good. through time. OK, well, that was a good premise. You <laughs> yeah, a little at the end. But no, that was good. Keep going. Sorry. Chuck Norris, Chuck Norris kicks with so much force <laughs> that he caused Will Smith to slap chris rock <laughs> chuck norris all right here is 
Uh, 101 Chuck Norris jokes to make you laugh, but please don't tell Chuck Norris. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Chuck Norris doesn't read books. He stares them down until he gets the information he wants. That's funny. Time waits for no man. Except Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> if you, this one's, are you ready to guffaw? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's see what they got. You're going to absolutely lose it on this one. Too bad we don't have a camera on the floor to see you roll all, rolling all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing your ass off. If you... Are you ready? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm ready. We're okay. Let's do it. If I... Carl, you ready? This is going to be good. Okay. Carl, you got to move. You know, you're really swimming around until the camera's on. But, but I also feel bad making him move. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you so don't want to do that. He's don't worry. He's um. I hope he's not getting old or fat or something. He's just being still because he doesn't want to start. If he laughs, it shakes too hard while he's swimming. He's going to shatter his own bowl. If you spell Chuck Norris in Scrabble, you win. Forever. No, uh, that's not a good one. <laughs> Maybe because you hyped it up so much. Uh, Chuck Norris is a mug of nails instead of coffee in the morning. <laughs> God, man. I'm trying to think of clever ones, and these are like, I guess they're okay. Okay, this one's not bad. Chuck Norris's tears cure cancer. Too bad he's never cried. <laughs> that's great. That's a great one. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good one. That's a Hall of Fame one. Uh, if you ask Chuck Norris, what, if you ask Chuck Norris what time it is, he always says two seconds till. After you ask two seconds till what, he roundhouse kicks you in the face. <laughs> no, that doesn't even make sense. Uh, <laughs> these are pretty good. I saw a video online of. All right, uh, I'm in. Who was that? Uh, I God, my name retrieval is terrible. Who was that action star I was looking up the other day? And you're like, oh yeah, let's look at the Steven Seagal. Oh yeah, okay. So I saw a video of some fan meeting Steven Seagal, and I can't remember what. What did? He asked him something like, what's the secret of Zen Buddhism or something? And, uh, it, well, first of all, they're having a normal interview, normal conversation. He catches them outside of a hotel on his way somewhere. But Siegel humors him because he's a fan. Yeah. He, he always wants to look good. You feed his ego. I mean, that's yeah. your way to his heart. Yeah. So they're having a normal interview. And then at the end, the guy goes, what's the secret to Zen or, or s asking him some weird, uh, Eastern philosophy question yeah. like that. And Steven Seagal throws him in the, into like a koi pond. They're standing by <laughs> and <What>? walks away. <laughs> and then he doesn't have like a snippy line at the end. Like that's Buddhism for you or whatever. No. Then the fan who just got dunked and the camera guy, like look it up on their phones and the secret to Zen or whatever question he asked is like, you must immerse yourself. <laughs> and they're like, what? Yeah, they're like, oh! <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Holy shit, that's so good. It was maybe set up, I don't know, but it looked, I bought it until the very end. And then the end was too perfect. I was a little bit like, eh, maybe Seagal was in on that or something, but. No way, he just knows. <laughs> but it was funny. He and he just looked, knows. he looked like normal, stupid Seagal when he did it. Of course. It's like he didn't know what to say, so he just pushed him in the fucking <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need is Steven Seagal facts. That's fun. Yeah. Steven Seagal doesn't drink coffee. Well, real he, facts. He drinks a mug of hoagies in the morning. <laughs> Dude, since we watched that compilation of him being weird, like I've learned about him. Like I guess he moved to Japan when he was 18 or something, and uh, he got a Japanese wife, and he opened a dojo. For Aikido or whatever he does. For Ikea, uh-huh. But uh, he just lived in Japan, and he 
you know, he's an American living in Japan, but he claimed he like was his business was threatened by the Yakuza and all this stuff. <laughs> like he makes Yakuza? up Yakuza. Yakuza. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. his story, I mean, he acts like he went to Japan in like 1800 and came right. back. <laughs> came right. back a different man and he wears like kimonos all the time. It's like <laughs> I love that. I love that. God, he's so fucking cool. <laughs> he's really not. <laughs> yes, he is. Because he'll roundhouse kick <laughs> crime and punishment. Well, he'll roundhouse <laughs> kick your feet. He can't, like, you know, <laughs> quite reach your head. Uh, he's the one who added punishment to crime and punishment because he kicked it. <laughs> <laughs> Those are harder to think of than they seem. Wait, what were the good ones? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Steven, Steven Seagal's tears. Cure cancer. Too bad he's never cried. Yeah, right. That's Chuck Norris, though. So we can't do the same one for Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal's oh, oh, oh. tears are touring. <laughs> <laughs> and he always cries. <laughs> he cries anytime you make fun of him. <laughs> I love, did you see South Park make fun of him? Yes. He like got in front of the auditorium. I don't remember the whole episode, but he just starts crying like, and they made fun of me on the internet and bullying is bad. Oh, we love you, Steven Seagal. Of course. We know you could kick the shit out of Chuck Norris. And well, like keto, you don't kick, you stand very still. And anything that flies toward you, you kind of do this, and yeah, the other person him, flies away. <laughs> I've seen him knock people out. Right. And it's, then they go flying. It's impressive. It's very impressive <laughs> the way he doesn't even look like he's pushing hard or moving quickly. He's not even winded. It's it looks incredible. like it's hurting him more than it's hurting the people he's <laughs> knocking out. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like he's folding his shirt at Urban Outfitters. It does. Oh, God, he's amazing. Uh, do you have a comic book fact today? Oh, yeah, I do. Comic strip. Fact. There's going to be a lot of noise this episode. I've kicked this thing a million times. That's okay. Oh, thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Johnny Hart, the creator of BC endorsed dr pepper what <laughs> let me start that over johnny hart the creator of bc endorsed dr pepper uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay now i can't cut that out in 19 well that one smelled dude Sorry. in 19 19- <laughs> No, you know, it's not yours. Yours is the one that's floating right around your area. I burped in my area. Because when I did this, I like whiffed. <laughs> you whiffed <laughs> over your face. In 1963 and 1964, Hart agreed to design some original characters to accompany print ads for the Dr. Pepper soft drink. <clears throat> After drafting a caveman named Harmon, who could eat bottles and extract the caps... He used him as inspiration for the monosyllabatic grog in the BC Strip. Wow. The campaign also involved a 1966 television commercial featuring an animated interlude. Wow. Very interesting. Unfortunately, I tr- I searched for that commercial and it doesn't appear to be online, but maybe that- we'll find it someday. We'll find it someday. Where does Dr. Pepper rank in your hierarchy of soft drinks? We know it's number one. Okay, well there you go. Uh, it's up there though. I don't. It maybe it is number one. I love Dr. Pepper over Mountain Dew. Yeah, but I don't. I have a caffeine issue, <laughs> and Mountain Dew helps me. I know how much caffeine I'm drinking. And Mountain Dew does not give me heartburn. Dr. Pepper does give me heartburn. Ouch. And it has sugar in it. This is Diet Mountain Dew. Well, there's Diet Dr. Pepper. That gives me heartburn. Dr. Pepper Zero. 
I don't want to make myself sick of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> and it really doesn't taste the same as regular Dr. Pepper. Diet Mountain Dew might be one of the best diet sodas out there, huh? Yeah, I think it tastes better than the regular. Wow, that's crazy. The regular is real syrupy. And that's bad? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, Dr. Pepper maybe you could say is syrupy, but I, I like it. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like, you know, I'm at the age officially now where I think I like Diet Coke better than regular Coke. I've always felt that way, actually. Really? It's sweeter. Yeah. Diet Coke is sweeter? Yeah, uh, aspartame is actually sweeter than sugar. But do they, well, when they use the same amount? I don't know that, but I, you know, that's a fact, but also separately, just ob- to me, subjectively, I feel like it does taste sweeter to me than Coca-Cola. Interesting. Coca-Cola's, I never liked it that much. What about Mexican Coke? Much better. Great. Yeah. Great. Not great? It's uh, great. Yeah, it's pretty good. Dr. Where, Pepper's still better. Where's... Okay. All right. All right. Top five. Mountain I've Dew. I never thought about this. <laughs> Mountain Dew, Dr. Pepper. Well, yeah. Okay. So Dr. Pepper, Diet Mountain oh, Dew. Yes, of course. Sorry. And heartburn's not an issue in this list. Right. Uh, there's a some cherry... Dr. Brown's Cherry Soda. That's one of the best cherry sodas. Wow, Dr. Brown's. Nice. Better than uh, Boylan. Boylan sucks. Boylan, I think, isn't great, huh? No, but they carry it in all these specialty shops like, ooh, look at this rare brand. It's like, I don't know. It's another shit product that it's just like, just because it's different. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It kind of looks like Dr. Brown's. Yeah, but. At least the cherry one. The Dr. Brown is just waste. Dr. Brown's is good. good. You don't see Dr. Brown's enough over here in the West Coast, and that's a darn shame. Oh, really? I discovered it at this Gelson's. Oh. Well, shut my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a there's a soda. Okay, so that's three, right? Yeah. There's this soda at BevMo called... Uh, Oh, man, what is it called? It's one of the best, though. It's like a cherry Italian soda. So I don't know how they do this, but the bubbles are tiny. I don't know. The the carbonation (laughs) seems different, or maybe it's just lighter. The mouthfeel is different? Yeah, the mouthfeel is different. It's not these hard bubbles like Mineragua. It's the soft bubble. Yeah. um, And you like that, but you like Mineragua for the hard bubbles. Yeah, but when I have a cherry soda, I want to s- taste the sweetness. Oh, you don't want your taste buds to be all attacked with bubbles. Yeah, I mean, there's it's still really carbonated, but man, what is it called? It's like Fez or something like that. Fez. Fifth one, I don't know. You gave me too many to name. I feel like we were on this a long time now. Uh, you know what's really good? Is Big ha- Red. <laughs> uh Big red. No, oh, that one sucks. That one sucks. <laughs> it's like a bubblegum soda. That really does suck. Barf. Hanson's Mandarin Lime, if you ever had that, that's maybe my number one of all time. That feels maybe a little cheating. Oh, and also on that same note, a uh, uh, Haritos. Like I don't. A, oh, those are okay. Mandarin Haritos. Squirt. The nah. Mexican squirt. Oh, maybe. Mexican Coke. Root beer. Sprite. Root beer is good. I love Sprite. Sprite's my big name number one, probably. Really? Yeah. That's the one I'm going to go for. go with if I'm getting something to eat. Or if I am at like a 7-Eleven looking for a soda, which, you know, this is very rare. Um, I yeah. love I love a Sprite. Interesting. Sprite, cran, cranberry, old winter cranberry spice, Sprites, winter spiced cranberry Sprite. Do you ever get a water at fast food and then like when you go back up, for seconds of water, maybe you get some Sprite. 
<laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Because I was about to say, I don't really like spread. I'd rather ha- drink water, but I've definitely done that. I don't know. Maybe I feel like I'm getting away with something. <laughs> yeah, you are. But, You're getting Sprite and not paying for it. Yeah, but it, it must be better to me if I'm doing that. Yeah, absolutely. You know what's great? This is what I do when I go to Costco. Here's a free hack out there for you guys to make the best drink you can have at Costco. Because, yeah, sure, I guess occasionally I'll drink a Diet Pepsi. But they have, like, Pepsi machines, right? Yeah. They got Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, um, uh, I think a raspberry iced tea. Can we get all the iced teas on soda fountains the fuck out of here? They're Thank all... You trash i agree (laughs) right yes what the fuck are they doing there who's drinking these arrest those people i've always hated tea it's just dirty water (laughs) (laughs) all you say that about all tea is just dirty (laughs) well i've you know i guess yeah sort of i love that i love that take (laughs) but if you are the type of person who you walk up to a soda fountain and you go hmm i think i'll have the brisk raspberry sweetened tea you're a piece of shit <laughs> you're homicidal a psycho. psychopath maniac and you deserve to be locked up for good we should save that for the worst of the worst people in the planet they should use it to torture people because it's trash. Even in a suicide, if you're making a suicide, you can pick out the fucking iced tea in there and it makes you barf. That's the part that makes a suicide so gross. All the other things are good. <laughs> I mean, go on. <laughs> it's crazy. Have you known someone who just gets those? I, yeah. if, if you look, it's terrible. If you have a side iced tea machine, where it offers unsweetened iced tea and then all the other shitty iced teas. Fine. You can have your own little separate iced tea machine if you need that. I am all for making an honor Arnold Palmer if you got lemonade there too. That makes mm. sense, right? Yeah, that's actually a good idea for a new machine, <laughs> a new invention. But that you, start a business. You can't use a raspberry sweet tea and then put in lemonade. That's not going to be good. You're still going to have half shit. Le- you're going to have half lemonade, half shit. Right. You yeah, that the- is the one that's must be popular. I've that's the one I see. That's the, the one most. that's there. It's always this raspberry one. It's trash. It's so weird. Yeah. Who likes that? You're. Right. I don't know. You're right. So at Costco. They have they have the lemonade, which is even a stretch too. I would rather have a different soda. You know, you don't need you got it. We we all right. You get to just rearrange the whole thing. We don't need um, just take Pepsi and Diet Pepsi. I get why they're there, but they should all be Coke. <laughs> yeah, Pepsi shouldn't be allowed legally to make machines. Um, but they they should. Well, they make Mountain Dew. That's they the should exception. have Mountain Dew there. <laughs> yes. They can have Cherry Pepsi. The wild Cherry Pepsi, I think, is better than when I was a kid. I did. I don't drink it anymore, but I would allow that. But we don't necessarily need lemonade. We don't necessarily need orange soda on every single soda machine. Right. That feels like a reach. Mm-hmm. Right? How's Mountain Dew not on everyone, but orange soda is? Root beer should be on every single one. It should be a cola. I'll give you a cola, a diet, diet cola, a lemon lime, a root beer. Then a Mountain Dew or a Mellow Yellow. That sounds great to me. Yeah. Or a squirt. I've never seen a squirt on a soda machine at all. Yeah. You keep going back to squirt. I don't I don't think I'm a <laughs> squirt fan. You don't like squirt. Maybe a ginger I ale. It. I like. Yeah. I like try a ginger ale every once in a while. I like ginger ale. On an airplane. By the like- way, my number five going way back to that because I because I it, said big red. That's bullshit. Orangina. Orangina yeah. is fantastic. I don't even know if that qualifies as a soda. Sure. Well, it's bubbly. soft drink. I don't know. 
No, that's a soda. That works. That counts. Orangino's great. But I these days stay away. F- you just talked about vending machines. I don't really go for that stuff anymore at all. A vending? Uh, no. It's like a soda fountain is what I'm talking about. Oh. I was the whole time picturing <laughs> a vending machine. I guess it applies either way. It applies either way, yeah. You can find more discrepancy on a on a vending machine, you know? It's not so one note. But a soda fountain, it's always the same, it feels like. Anyway, at Costco, what you gotta do, you get you you get lemonade they so behind the the starry i guess it's called now sierra mist went through a rebranding which who cares sierra mist you're not on anyone's map starry sierra mist <laughs> call it whatever the fuck you want i liked the name though sierra mist i like that name better than starry too yeah I, they were tired of being losers, and they thought Starry would make them compete with Sprite better. I guess <laughs> I don't oh, know. God. I don't know. It's a desperate. It sounds like move. a soda you buy from Wish. dot com. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's a desperate move, but go to the Starry Sierra Mist machine, and you the back button says soda. You know they have the little tabs at the bottom, like if you want to get water. That one says soda, and it's just soda water. So if you get your ice, get get maybe a, a, a third lemonade, maybe even a little less, maybe a quarter lemonade, and then uh, two thirds, fill most of the way up with soda water, and then a little float on top of Sierra Mist, just for a little added bit of sweetness. Then you got like a a soda water with lemon. Uh, sweet lemon dri- drippings. <laughs> made it sound gross at the end, but it's good. <laughs> drippings. Essence of lemon is what you mean. Yes, essence of lemon. They place the lemon inside of it, but don't squeeze it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They rub the rim of your paper cup with the lemon. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's the drink you get at Costco to accompany a hot dog and a slice of pizza. They stopped selling that stuff to non members. I know. Lame. I'm not a member. <laughs> I'll take you anytime you want. They also stopped serving that barbecue, which I loved. <laughs> barbecue? So I'm over it. They had brisket at, at the one in Glendale. They had brisket sandwiches. They were incredible. Oh, yeah. I remember that being there for a little bit. There's no good barbecue out here. That's, I mean, this is world-class food in L.A., but the one thing that I miss from Texas really is Texas barbecue, but that was really good brisket. Wow. At, at a super corporate <laughs> superstore of wow. all things. Wow. But that... it wasn't popular enough, I guess, and they don't serve it now. So you want you have not had good barbecue in Los Angeles. That was decent, truly. Costco, um, yeah. Costco. Yeah. And there was a guy when I lived near Santa Monica, there was a guy on the west side who in the farmer's market, he just had a stand. I think he probably had a restaurant somewhere. I don't know. That shit was amazing. Yeah. The dude from Louisiana. Do you remember where we used to live in Burbank? There was that grocery store that had the um, tri-tip sandwiches. Yeah, those... I ate it a few times. I ordered it. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great, I don't think. It was too dry most of the time. Have you tried blood sows? No. All right, we're going to go try and find you some good barbecue. Yeah, let's. Or any any good soul food. I, I mean, I never tried that chicken and waffles place. Roscoe's. I never tried that. Wow. But that... I mean, it's fried chicken and waffles. Yeah, so. that's some... That's not the southern food I grew up with. Right. I never even really heard of chicken and waffles. What's the southern food you grew up with? Barbecue. Yeah, Tried and uh, chicken fried brisket. chicken and chicken fried steak and grits and collard greens and yeah i don't know that all sounds great yeah but chicken and waffles that's weird it's good i don't even i mean yeah it sounds fun it's like everything i'm very (laughs) i'm like picky (laughs) but i'm not like that i don't i would still eat it but i'd rather have a different side than waffles 
Yeah, if they're like, choose your side, you got chicken, choose your side. I would never choose waffles. But syrup mixing in with your fried chicken, doesn't that seem appealing to you? Maybe. Or I guess I just picture the... dry waffles and it no, sounds gross. a waffle with butter and syrup on it, and then you cut off a little piece of fried chicken, and you have one bite that's syrupy, crunchy waffle, buttery waffle with a fried chicken Moist fried chicken little wedge on there and a little know. hot sauce on top. I'll, I would try it, but they closed down in Hollywood. They did. Yeah. All right. Well, we're, we're <laughs> going we're gonna to figure that out for you because I think you like gonna, that. I do. I love it. <clears throat> I will. I love to eat it. Yeah. It sounds delicious to me. Do I eat it very often? No, hardly ever. Am I eating fried chicken and waffles? Um, but I love, and you know, actually, it was really good fried chicken. Uh, I like fried chicken a lot. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Jolly Bee. Oh, yeah, they're pretty good chicken. I've tried some of their stuff and it's not. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just get yeah, their, their fried, fried chicken. Good. The spaghetti's pretty, uh, the spaghetti's pretty <laughs> crazy. I was going to say, oh, I like it. It's but good. It, but it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's not like, uh, Gourmet Italian spaghetti. <laughs> no, it's like barbecue sauce spaghetti with hot dogs cup chopped in it. And a couple of sh- cups of sugar. And <laughs> yeah, it it's there. strange. It's strange, but it's good. Yeah. But the fried chicken's bomb.com. Do you know that's, I think, a Filipino yeah. place? Yeah. Yeah. Odd. Odd. Oh, I had something I want to talk to you about. Because we ahead. know that you, my friend, are very... Very, 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 very excited Com- for <laughs> for a certain movie coming out. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, I think it already came out. A certain movie that has already come out. Right. Okay. So I was scrolling through Reddit as one does. Came across a movie review. <laughs> okay. Of Super Mario Brothers? Of Super Mario Brothers, exactly. And I just wanted to read it to you. Okay. <laughs> the beginning of this interview, read this review, and hear what you thought of it, okay? Go for it. All right. This is written by The Telegraph. Okay. By Robbie Collin, film critic. Is this the Telegraph? What is this a city? A city? The Telegraph is like a British newspaper. Okay, got it. Okay, here we go. The Super Mario Bros. movie review, like being frog marched round Toys R Us, one out of five stars. Somehow, this new animated adaptation of the video game is even worse than the abominable 1993 live action. Even the CGI is second rate. Okay, here we go. I'll just read this. You can see in the commercials the CGI is good. The CGI looks fantastic, I know. (laughs) Okay, well, this guy has it out for Mario. Let's see (laughs) where this goes. The first ever live-action film adaptation of a video game was 1993's Super Mario Bros. starring Bob Haskins and John Leguizamo. Dark and smirkingly edgy in a sub-Ghostbusters whiff of desperation way and bearing almost no resemblance to the Calypso-scored sugar-hued Nintendo franchise on which it was based, it is now widely, and not unreasonably, regarded as one of the worst motion pictures ever made. Okay. Okay. You agree with that so far? Sure. (laughs) Even so... (laughs) I'd watch that fascinating failure again in a heartbeat over this new animated version from the Minions Studio Illumination, which is as shallow, sterile, and eyeball-drillingly inane a feature-length brand extension exercise as Hollywood has yet produced. Goodness knows the two recent Sonic the Hedgehog films felt like vacuous cashins. Super Bro, Super Mario Bros. makes them look like Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> what? That's an example of high art. Raiders of the Lost Ark. 
Comparatively. Yeah, I mean, I guess, but he could have said uh, Citizen Kane. <laughs> or are you saying that is a cash grab? This, what is a cash grab? This whole Indiana movie? Indiana Jones. Oh, what do you think yeah. Indiana Jones is? <laughs> Uh, but does not sound really good. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this person's angry. Does it like. do anything entertaining or imaginative with these recognizable objects? I'm skipping ahead because I don't want to um, give anything away. Well, no. Just recreating I mean, them. honestly, I don't mind. I'm aware it's going to be shallow. I don't know what you expect. <laughs> it's a Mario movie. Just recreating them in surprisingly second rate CG while shouting, remember this is moronically and relentlessly all we get. And no fan service gambit appears to have been deemed too wretched or shaming for consideration. Among the more notable lows is the minute long dramatization of the vehicle selection menu from Mario Kart 8. Sometimes an actual joke manages to wriggle under the fence, though most are variations on two or three threadable themes. But I'm too cute to insert uncute action here. And characters gurning during slow motion backflips are both insanely tedious staple. And whenever an action sequence starts to feel like meaningless wheel spinning, which is often a 1980s pop standard is used to mushroom boost it over the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was a nice reference. You know what? I heard that in another review and that does sound a little bit dreadful that's like some executive who's made every other movie we've seen is like oh yeah you definitely got to throw some 80s rock in there it's like yeah, yeah every single movie yes. has that. every single movie every single movie yep i mean i can't believe it what do you think is that heartbreaking <laughs> to hear yeah i mean i thought they were gonna really go through the deep lore of mario and <laughs> deep lore the deep lore the you know <laughs> the f i don't know i thought it was going to be about the art not just some um some lame cash in it's so disappointing that it's actually about selling merchandise <laughs> they timed it to come out after they opened a theme park <laughs> uh, i know yeah whatever i mean who cares it's his he's got to write something I'm sure he doesn't enjoy watching films like that, being a film critic. That's not surprising. Well, it, the good news is is that it is rated 54% on Rotten Tomatoes. 54%, I, I believe is that's that correct. Critics or audience? Audience score? What do you think the audience score is? 70. 96. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he other than the 80s thing, which does sound obnoxious, like people want a shallow, stupid. They want to see the movie version of the game. It is just a product, but yeah, I mean, it's very simple. It's and it's hard to even get that out of Hollywood. Sometimes it's like. So when a property does that, it's actually it's going to be a hit. You know. I am on board. I mean, if this is if Mario is the new Marvel, I'll go all Mario over Marvel. Yeah, I know a lot more about him and Zelda and stuff than I know ever knew about comic books. I'm gl dude, it took a lifetime for me for comic book movies to stop being popular. I never enjoyed them that much ever. Yeah. <laughs> I watched Ant-Man. That was okay. The Quantum Mania one? No. I watched just oh, the first Ant-Man, I watched Age of Ultron, and I watched the first and second Iron Man, and which I don't really remember either of them that much. People loved Iron Man. I know. I didn't get that. I, I've watched too many of them. I've watched too many of the superhero films. Uh, I just named all the ones I watched, and even that seems like not nearly enough. Like Everyone knows all these storylines and stuff, and they talk about it. And yes. like, I can't wait for Endgame. Ugh. I, like part of me is like proud that I don't know that stuff. But part of me is like, oh, wow, I really missed the boat. And now it's too late to go back and watch all these movies. It's so much work. It's just too much fucking work. And now with Disney Plus, they have the fucking 
shows that you have to watch too that feed into the movies like oh now i'm not gonna get this part of hour five of ant-man quantum mania because i didn't watch episode six of wandavision like shut the fuck up i yeah. don't i can't and i don't want to and none of it's that good yeah star wars is getting that way for me that's my star wars is the same exact thing that's always been my favorite thing of that like property or whatever but yeah now there's too much there's so much lore like it used to just be simple you know the right. hero goes and saves a princess and he's got he meets a wizard and all this stuff but now it's like like i'm watching these videos and they're like translating like alien things that are over each doorway and stuff it's like all right right you know <laughs> now i'm feeling like a trekkie right there's too much to know Right, exactly. Like I need people speaking Klingon and knowing the history of every stupid little planet and everything. It's crazy. It's crazy. And in Marvel now, the new Ant Man movie, they go into the quantum realm, right? Right. Which is uh, so small, of it, but it's its own universe. It's super duper duper tiny, right? Right. And in that universe, anything goes. So now it's like they're in basically a Star Wars. <laughs> oh, okay. Because it's There's this... aliens and yes, ships. yes, and it's like what? Well, okay, so now Marvel is Star Wars, and then they're gonna make Star Wars Marvel, and they're just gonna kind of switch places. And it's like, when does this shit stop? When are we done with Star Wars and Marvel? <laughs> it's a real shame too, because when Disney bought Star Wars, I was kind of excited because I saw them be successful at that time with Marvel. And right. I didn't pay attention to that stuff because I wasn't into that. But then they bought Star Wars. I was like, oh, they're going to rock Star Wars. They're going to put a jolt into this property. Right. And like, we're going to get a whole new trilogy. Ugh. We did get a whole <laughs> new trilogy, then it sucked. It sucked bad. The first episode, I have complaints, but it's like I could live with it. It was pretty good. Most people liked it. The first trilogy? The, no, the, just the first uh, episode of the new trilogy. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Seven. The very whatever. first movie that Disney made yes. was pretty good. I mean, yes. I can complain. Like, sure. I didn't like the sameness. I got the same complaints as everybody, but overall, pretty good movie. Yeah, not Enough horrible. surprises and new things, and everybody else loved it, so we could all kind of like it together as a society. <laughs> right. <laughs> but right. God... That second movie was so bad. I think it ruined everything forever. Yes. <laughs> and so long, too. I didn't care anymore after that second movie. And it really, I mean, the first, the prequels, it makes the prequels, the prequels are actually really good when you look back at those, on those. Well, I can see why people think and say they're bad, but yeah, I enjoy them. I understood from why. a filmmaker perspective, you could like definitely pick apart writing problems and stuff. like oh, that. Oh, definitely. But they're just so much more dense than, than the original three. There's so much more going on and there's so much more lore that they're trying to actually figure out and explain, which is fun and exciting. Um, and you really have to focus and figure out. Um, but I am just want them all want those both to go away. And start something new. Yeah, I agree. Well, and all this uh, making live action of every Disney animated film. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's just, yeah. I, this has been decades of this in Hollywood. Just right. sequels and remakes. Right. It's kind of nuts. It is In nuts. the 90s, there was a lot of original stuff. Right. And in the 80s, too. And comedies were made. Remember that? Yeah. That's weird. That is. I mean, but people still watch comedy just on TV, I guess. Some the theater's more talk. like a ride these days. Right. Well, it's just got to be big action that's based it not in reality so that it can work in an s international audience. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, this has nothing to do with what's going on in China or how we feel about any real-world problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
No, we're in a magic tiny world where nothing matters and everyone's <laughs> politics are fine. I didn't even think about that, but you're exactly right. Dude, did you hear about this last Disney uh, uh, shareholder meeting? No. Well, I guess to back up, are you aware that Disney's having a fight with Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, over their property or whatever? Yes. So that's going on. Disney recently had a shareholder meeting, I think yesterday or the day before. And Bob Iger was answering questions and responding to shareholders and he got ambushed. And I wonder, I suspect Ron DeSantis had something to do with it. What do you mean he got jumped? No, I just mean in a Q and a people were like, so a caller got onto this call and basically was like, so given that Disney, Oh, I remember what it was. He was like, you know, Back in the 1940s, Walt Disney uh, put like all this stuff toward the war effort and like supported the country and all this stuff. Yeah. And now, uh, now we're shooting Milan in uh, like right near concentration camps in China and we're thanking the Chinese communist organization that's running concentration camps. Right. And like they're like calling this stuff out on record in a shareholder meeting. To Bob Iger. I mean, that's pretty sick. <laughs> and there's like, uh, that's great. And other stuff too. But one guy was definitely hung up on LGBT stuff. Uh-huh. So it was very conservative, but that goes back to maybe Ron DeSantis head. Right. It's, the, it's I mean, kind of exciting drama. Honestly, I've, I've told you I'm into this behind the scenes. Disney, like it is yeah. ch- a churning mess well, like, for the past co- few years it's funny too because like they want to play it so safe but that also means playing it safe internationally so nba is the exact same way so like they just have to try and hope no one calls them out about the shit they do for china you know they let china do whatever they want because china gives them so much money so they're just kind of like eh. so you know ron DeSantis. is they were what trying to investigate Disney and Disney like fucked them up. And like somehow they couldn't investigate Disney for 50 years. They found some loophole or something. I saw it wasn't investigating. It was, they had, I don't know the exact in and outs be- yeah. because this call actually revealed something new to me, but basically Disney has very special privileges regarding the property that, uh, Disney world and all those parks that Disney owns is on like, Privileges that no other theme park, Universal Studios doesn't get this. Basically, Disney is like running its own city. Gotcha. So when you call the fire department, it's a private fire department that Disney runs. Gotcha. It's a little fashi- fascism-y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. which the irony and the, the uh, what's it called, um, hypo- hypocrisy yeah. really like... yeah. As you dig into this shit, it really it really reveals itself. But in this call, Bob Iger got flustered, and apparently there's some legal loophole where Disney gets these special privileges, but they don't. They're not supposed to technically run the city. But in this call, Bob Iger was like, "Well, you know, the governor's trying to uh, mess with our company. It's anti-business. It's anti-Florida because you know we run the Reedy Creek district." Uh, Oops. Oh, wow. Well, at least these guys on YouTube were like, holy shit. They were like going nuts. Like, oh my God, that's definitely going to come up in court and all this yeah. shit. Yeah. Dude, I mean, it's a drama behind the scenes at Disney and it's wow. fascinating. <laughs> wow. That is really fascinating. Oh, well, looks like we're running out of time, huh? We got another one coming up. That's, yeah, that's crazy. And so if you are fucking with. Ron DeSantis, and then he's like, I know a way we can really fuck with them. Let's talk to them about China and the Weiger. Like, like I'm sure Ron DeSantis is... Well, I mean, the first thing leading up to this was uh, Disney called out DeSantis for an, what appears to be... I don't really know everything about everything. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what appears to be an anti-trans law for talking about trans issues in school... Uh huh. Disney or the previous CEO of Disney called out that law in Florida. So Ron DeSantis was like, 
oh, Disney's calling me out. Okay, you know what? Disney is a company that has special privileges, and we're going to review this. And that's what led to this whole fight. Gotcha. So both sides are being vindictive, and it's it's well, b- everyone's yeah. bad <laughs> in my opinion. Everyone's bad. Disney's doing it to probably protect their brand and be like, yeah, we're in Florida, but we don't like this of anti-trans law. Um, yeah, but we're not going to, of course, do a trans thing in China. Because right. we respect that. Right, of course. Of course, the great people of China don't, don't want us to do that, and they're giving us more money than Florida is. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, so. And then what Ron DeSantis did, I would argue, I mean, I think Disney shouldn't have special privileges, but still, the governor shouldn't be getting revenge on people. <laughs> You know, using his power, just you know, right? Like, would the, would he have done that if Disney didn't raise a fuss? You know, no, no. So that's way. kind of a fucked up uh, motivation. But I as a also, <laughs> I also like Bob Iger being put on the spot and have to answer for all the shit he's bowing to China over. Yeah, you know, same with yeah. Adam Silver in the NBA or any sports. Why are we just letting you know? Just because of the money, we we're just trying to hush up. About all the atrocities China's committing. It's it's complex because that is a huge country with... I mean, the government there is the gatekeeper to a swath of consumers, you know? Right. <laughs> right. So, you, so it's more than like money, like a one-time payment or something. This is like three United States worth of customers. Right. If I can just maybe not you know, upset the Chinese government. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just trying to, that's no, I see how they get in that mindset of like, you know, Oh, well I'll let this slide. I'll let that slide because it's so much money for it. Well, and, and, and I just know the NBA better, but it's, I'm sure it's similar, but like with the NBA, you have all these Chinese like sneaker companies and stuff who have relationships with their deals with the athletes to wear their oh. special Chinese brand shoes that are creaking, creeping their way into the NBA, the Li Ning or Anta, these like different Chinese companies. And I'm sure other sponsorships we don't even fucking know about that all these athletes have. So not only is it the business that is going there, the business is coming back. It's these, all these ties, you know, like in it's all throughout sports. I mean, fucking Lionel Messi, the world cup winner, uh, you know, the soccer player, mm-hmm. he is now an ambassador for Saudi Arabia. <laughs> he's an official. Steven Seagal is a big Russian. He, he's like friends with. Putin. Right. And yeah, Saudi, it's, it's, Saudi Arabia is a weird world we live in, man. <laughs> Argentina, the World Cup winning team, lost one game in the World T- Cup to fucking Saudi Arabia. <laughs> wow. It's Whoa! All fucked. Isn't that crazy? That's creepy. And th- and is that FIFA? Yes. Yeah, because they've been found to corrupt to be corrupt oh, before. Oh yeah, FIFA's bad too. All sports is fucked. It's all fucked, and so is uh, our company. So anyway, that being said, um, I'm looking forward to the new Mario movie. <laughs> yeah, Universal <laughs> Studios. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure there's no weird uh, Chinese uh, business <laughs> backdoor deals going on with Nintendo. No. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're, you know what? Nintendo, I, I'm a shareholder, not of Disney, but of Nintendo actually, but not to brag. Wow. All right. Now I have to reveal. It's just like a couple shares and it's not worth very much. But anyway, <laughs> a majority shareholder of Nintendo. Go on. I own Nintendo, but uh, <laughs> they are very cutthroat. Which is interesting, but uh, but you know nothing really illegal or that I've ever heard of. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm sure everybody has skeletons in their closet, but yeah, it seems like their issue is like they are ruthless in business, right? <laughs> like right. they'll they screwed over so- Sony in the '90s. Did oh, you know really? about that? No, the Sony PlayStation was going to be the Nintendo PlayStation. They were working really? together with Sony and during a convention without telling Sony, Nintendo presented the Nintendo 64 or they presented something that was going to compete with Sony, even though before that they had been working together with Sony 
Wow. So that left Sony with no choice but to like release the PlayStation, and now Nintendo fucked up. Now they have an extra competitor. But right, 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 right. Crazy. Yeah, there's some interesting little things like that. Crazy. Well, I say give me a hundred Nintendo movies and no more Star Wars and Marvel movies. I agree, but I mean, whatever. Do they have? They spent. That's a thing about Disney too is they spent so much money acquiring all these properties right. that they are f- practically forced. They have a fiduciary duty to like right. pump out content. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good or bad. Just keep it coming out. Well, on that note, you ready to do some comic strips? Let's do it. Back all to right. basics. Back to basics. So you have won last week. I think this is your second week in a row. Or third well, week, third. third time bringing BC to the podcast because BC is on one hell of a run that nobody except for Carl saw coming. It's a streak. So go ahead. I saw Carl trying to burrow in the rocks earlier. Wow. Bury his <laughs> head. Maybe I should get him sand instead. Well, if you have yet to see Carl. Then go to the Strip Tease podcast channel on YouTube and check it out there, right? That's right. Okay. Now that the business is taken care of, it's time for some pleasure. All right. This is BC by Mastroianni and Hart. This is uh, a lot of panels, but it's just a scene. So I'll just tell you the scene and then I'll tell you the dialogue. Okay. I don't, I don't need to say new panel every time. Okay. So this guy's climbing. Up it, it's about cavemen, whatever. I guess that's irrelevant. But this guy's climbing up a huge mountain, and he finally gets to the top, and there's an old wise man sitting cross, you know, uh, crisscross Apple on sauce. the ground. Yes. Uh, the wisest way a man can sit. Exactly. So the caveman says, Oh, wise one, what is the secret of life? The secret is revealed to those who are ready to hear it. How do you know when someone is ready to hear it? They'll have asked the right question. What's the right question? Well, it ain't should I climb a giant mountain to bother an old man on his Sunday off. (laughs) That's pretty good. I like that. (laughs) That's pretty good. I like that one. God, BC's on a run. For real. BC's on a run. Okay, I brought in Hagar the Horrible. If you don't know Hagar the Horrible, he's a Viking, and he's up to his Viking escapades. Got a big orange beard and a round nose, and a Viking helmet, and um, eyes. Okay, so he's <laughs> sitting sitting at a bar with uh, with another kind of Vikingish guy, more of a pipsqueak, um, and and he's got a mug of ale in front of him, a cask. Of ale. All right. And the guy says to him, my date is always late because she spends too much time on her makeup. And Hagger goes, you seem to tolerate that. So there must be something special about her. And the last panel. He goes, she makes me laugh. And she comes in board says, sorry, I'm late. And she's a clown. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Mm. Ooh, yeah, that is funny. Wow. Well, they're both so good. I don't think there should be a loser this time. They both actually made us both laugh. Yeah. We got to bring them back. Okay. That was amazing. Incredible. We both genuinely laughed. I think comic strips are making a return. Yeah. And we're helping. Yeah. We're leading the charge. You're right. The Striptease podcast. They have something to... Uh, right for now to be, appear on our podcast. That's why they're all doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, guys, look forward to a uh, Hagar versus BC round two. If you got an especially good Hagar or an especially good BC, please send it to us. We can find us on all socials at Striptease Cast um, or StripteasePodcast dot com. Yep. Go anywhere around there. Please get in contact with us. Follow us. Watch us. Give us love. Until then, keep listening, keep laughing, and and keep keep stripping. stripping.